Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over nested arrays. So a nested array is an array containing arrays. And specifically, we are going to go over 2D arrays, otherwise known as a matrix. So we've gone over arrays, you can have arrays of integers, booleans, characters, strings, but you can also have arrays of arrays. And having nested arrays is very useful if you want to store data in the form of a table, or if you want to represent a grid or board. So in this video, we're going to go over to the arrays. So specifically, just arrays of arrays. And to declare a 2D array, you would have to declare the type of each individual array. And so let's say I want an array of strings representing currencies, I would do string currencies, like so. And this would be one array. But if I want to have an array of these arrays of strings, I would add another bracket like so. And I can initialize the array. So let's say I want to create an array of strings for a specific currency, for instance, USA, the currency would be USD. And this would be referred to as a dollar. And then I can also create another one, Canada. And in Canada, they use the Canadian dollars. So this is also called a dollar. And I can also add another entry. So let's say the UK. In the UK, they use GBP. And this is pound. And you can also format this. So instead of having them all in one line, you can format it like a table. So I can go like this. And I can move this here. And I can just move this to new line. And you can see I can format it like so. And this will look more like a table. And the reason why I can format it like so is because the semicolon tells us when the line ends. So this is equivalent to just having them all in one line. And you might notice here I have a squiggle. When I have a nested array, I have to declare the size, specifically the size of the inner array. So in this case, I have three entries. And within each entry, I have three values. So here I will put three. And as you can see, the error will go away because C++ now knows that this is an array of arrays of strings. And for the array of strings, there are three strings. Whereas for this number, C++ will infer what that number is based on how many values I initialize. So if I add another entry, let's say Spain, in Spain, they use the euro. So this is EUR, then this value would be four. And then let's add one more, France. France also uses the euro. So these two countries are in the European Union. All right, so here we have a 2D array representing currencies of different countries. And likewise, you can specify the value here. So in this case, I can say five, and this will be okay, because we have five entries. And within each entry, there are three values. All right. And let's just move this here. Okay, cool. So now we have our 2D array. Now how can we print out the values in our array? So the way we would do so is just using a for loop. So I can do for int i is equal to zero, i is less than five, because we have five arrays in this array, i plus plus, I can do c out currencies of i so this is the current index. So it's going to be zero, then one, two, three, four. So we want the first value. Therefore, this is index zero. And then why don't we also print out the second and third value. So we would do currencies i one and currencies i two. And then let's add the end line. So now if I save and run the program, you can see we get the values within our 2D array. So this is index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And within each row, we have 
zero, one, two. Okay. Now, when we're printing our 2D array, here we are printing out three values in each array. And this is fine because we only have three values. But what if we had more values? Let's say 10 values. It would be silly for us to write out all 10 values in a single print statement like so. So we can just use a for loop. So instead of doing it like this, I can do for int j equals zero. So usually we start with i. And then if we have a nested for loop, we use the next letter, which is j. And if we have another for loop within the for loop, then we use k and so on. And one thing to note here is that the letter j is in lowercase, just like with the letter i. And it is very easy to confuse these two letters. So make sure that you don't accidentally type in i when you mean to type in j. So within here, I would do j less than 3, j++. plus plus. So here, I'm iterating through the main array. And here, I'm iterating through each value within each array. So here, I'm going to do C out currencies of i of j. And then I will add a white space character. So this will print out all the values within the specific array. And then at the very end, outside this for loop, I'm going to see out the end line character. All right, so let's save and run the program. And as you can see, we have our currencies here. And so that is one use case for a 2D array if you want to create something that is organized like a table. Another use case would be if you were to create a grid or board like game. So for instance, tic-tac-toe. So we can use a 2D array to create a tic-tac-toe board. So we can do car tic-tac-toe. And there are three arrays. And within each array, there are three values. So it is a three by three board. So I can have for the first row, a white space, and then an X, and then maybe another white space. And then I can also have for the second row, O, X, O. And then maybe for the last row, we can do an empty space. And then the last element, we're going to put O. So here we have a tic-tac-toe board representation as a 2D array. And as I mentioned earlier, we can format this better. So I can just move this to new line and just press enter. So now you can see we have a better representation of our 2D array. And I think there's an extra white space here. So here you can see we have our tic-tac-toe board as a 2D array. And let's print out our board. So I can do for int i is equal to zero, i less than three, i plus plus. For int j is equal to zero, j less than three, j plus plus. And I would just see out tic tac toe of i j. And then after that, for the next row, I'm going to see out the end line character. All right, so now let's save and run the program. And as you can see, we have our tic-tac-toe board over here. And we can also update the board. So let's say this is the current state of the board. And now it is X's turn. So in order for X to win, X needs to be placed over here. So how can we get this value over here? Well, it will be index 0, 1, 2. So it is the array at index 2. And within that array, we have 0, 1. Therefore, if I want to place an x here, I would do tic-tac-toe index 2 index 1. And I'll set this to an x. All right, so now if I save and run the program, you can see we've placed an x here at index 2 and index 1. OK, so that's how you can update a value within a 2D array. All right, so that's another use case for a 2D array. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to create a fully functional 
game of tic-tac-toe in C++. All right, so that's 2D arrays. And finally, I want to mention 2D vectors. And 2D vectors are similar to 2D arrays, but the difference is, unlike with each individual array where you have a fixed size, if you have a 2D vector, each individual vector does not have to be a fixed size. So you can have vectors of different sizes. So for instance, let's say I have a vector of vectors and the type of the vector is string. So to declare a 2D vector, you would do vector, angle brackets, specify the type. And in, in this case, we have a vector of strings. So let's say I have a vector of student classes. So not all students have the same number of classes. So let's say student one has chemistry and then algebra and then English. And then we can add another vector for student two and maybe the student only takes one class. So maybe it's French. And then we have a third student who takes maybe two classes like chemistry and maybe physics. So let's add a semicolon here and let's format this. So this is easier to read. So I'm going to move this here. So you can see we have three students so far and let's just add another one. And maybe we'll have English, economics, and then maybe a third class, statistics. So here you can see this is similar to a 2D array, except unlike with a 2D array, each entry has different number of values. Okay. And so if I want to print out the values, what I can do is for size T, I is equal to zero, I less than student classes dot size, I plus plus, and then for size t j is equal to zero, j less than student classes at index i dot size j plus plus. So here we are getting the size of the student classes. So we have four over here. And then for the inner for loop, we are getting the size of that specific vector. So the current vector. So the size will change based on which vector we're looking at. So the first one has a size of three, the next one has a size of one, and then two, and then three again. So therefore we are not using a static value. Instead, we are getting the value using the size method. So here I can do C out student classes of I, J. And then here, let's just add an inline character after each vector. So let's save and run the program. And as you can see, we have the student classes. Okay. And of course, you can modify each individual vector. So let's say I want to modify the student at index two, and I want to give the student another class. What I can do is student classes at index two dot push back. And let's say I want to add geography. So now if I save and run the program, you can see the student at index two has a new class geography. Okay. All right, so that's it for this video. So that's 2D arrays, or otherwise known as a matrix, and we also have 2D vectors. So if you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like, and if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you wanna stay up to date for more C++ videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.